Good evening, family. This is Miss Norma. This is our reading for today for April the 10th and it's titled, In Which State Do You Live? Our song for today is called Captivated by Nicole C. Mullen. And our scripture lesson is Colossians 1 and verse 2. Whew. Let us pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for waking us up, Lord, um, with the ability and the strength and the soundness of mind to get through our day, no matter what type of day it was. Father, we're still here, and by your grace, we are still standing. Blessing and healing, Lord, out to everyone that hears this prayer, Lord. Whether they hear it a week from now, a month from now, or a year from now, I ask that the strength and the power of your word will remain in this prayer, Lord. And as people listen to it, Father, as your children listen to it, they will be blessed and receive encouragement for such a time as this or for the hour of their need. Thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' name, amen. In which state do you live? Scripture lesson, Colossians 1 and verse 2 from the New Testament. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you do any traveling at all, sooner or later, someone will ask, where do you live? Followed by, is what's, in what state is that? I have given various answers through the years. I used to live at the south end of Lodi, California. I lived in one of the Washington DC communities, commuters bedroom community just outside of Hagerstown in the state of Maryland. Or I live near the northwest corner of the state of Alabama, or now I live in Georgia. I have enjoyed living in different places, but moving is never easy, even when I have been convinced that God is leading. As I considered the joys and challenges of moving, I remembered the Apostle Paul. In addressing his letter to the Colossians, he identified not only the city where his readers lived, but also the state in which they lived. In Colossians 1 and verse 2, Paul, speaking for Timothy and himself, said, We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. Did you get that? The readers lived in the city of Colossae, but the state where they flourished was in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. How did Paul know that the Colossians lived in Christ? Because both he and Timothy thank God for, quote, your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel that bringeth forth fruit. That's verses four through six of Colossians chapter one. It says all evidence of the estate in Christ. Right now, some of us are living in a state of depression, or the state of fear, or the state of uncertainty. uncertainty. If this is the case in any of our lives, it is well past time for us to move to the state of being in Christ. Amen, amen, hallelujah. We needn't dread this move because he has promised to make this transition through this through his holy spirit as we pray read his word 
and apply it to our lives and situations, the move may be a process. But who would not want to live in Christ where faith, love, hope, and fruit-producing gospel truth lift our thoughts, prayers, purposes, and even our emotional outlook? Besides, in the presence of Jesus, we can experience, say it with me, those who know it, fullness of joy. Amen. That's Psalm 16, verse 11. Whatever transpires in our geographical locations, we can still have a positive mindset and a sound state of mind when we choose. I said when we choose moment by moment to live in Christ. Hallelujah. I know I've gotten so much from this reading, but I'm sure that this reading was meant for somebody to hear. I almost didn't use this book, but the Holy Spirit told me to look at this one first. And the title grabbed my attention, In Which State Do You Live? And I said, oh, it sounds interesting. So when I saw that, I asked the Lord for a song to go with this reading. And when I went into YouTube Music, it was right up on the screen, Captivated. And I'm telling you, that's what we got to be. We got to be captivated in Christ, not captivated in some of the circumstances that keep us down and depressed. Praise God. I don't know who needs this, but I know that it's encouragement to my soul. Our reading for today was written by Carolyn Rathbun Sutton. Family, let us pray. I'm at seven, over seven minutes now. My apologies. Abba Father, thank you so much for this reading. Lord, I know it has brought joy and strength to my heart. And Father, plant it up here so I don't forget which state I live in. Lord, may we all touch our heads and just say, plant it up here, Lord Jesus. Let us remember which state we want to live in and that it's best to live in. Hallelujah. Blessing and healing, Lord, to all of our land. I push out the blanket, Lord. I throw it out over your people this evening, and I ask that it lands. And as the blanket lands on them, Lord, they would get the blessing that they stand in need of. Or the joy, Lord, that they stand in need of. Thank you, Abba Father. Heal our land. I thank you for being able to get home a little early, Lord, to do my reading. In Jesus' name, I thank you and I praise you, Abba Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good night, family. This is Miss Norma getting ready to sign off. And remember that the greatest love of all is the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Good night, family.